this is going to be a quick video. This is for, you know, trig students. This is for um, students in Calc 2 or Calc 3, you know, plotting polar coordinates. And um, knowing these polar coordinates, knowing how to plot them is very important. Knowing how to convert also between rectangular and polar coordinates is important too, but let's just start with plotting polar coordinates. And um, <clears throat> a polar coordinate is basically an r and a theta. Instead of an x and a y, it's an r and theta. And instead of an x-axis and a y-axis, you have what's called the polar axis here. Instead of the origin, this is called the pole. And we're always, you know, moving out away from the pole and around the polar axis. So what happens is when we graph on a polar coordinate system, we get these concentric circles. Instead of like on a rectangular coordinate system, when you guys graph on graph paper, you get these like, <clears throat> excuse me, these boxes. We get these um, circles, one, two, three, four, and we move out from the pole. So R is the distance from the pole. And theta is the angle from the polar axis. Positive angles go um, counterclockwise. Right? Positive thetas and negative thetas go clockwise. So this is the same thing as, um, you know, if you're just kind of like drawing a, an angle on a standard, in a standard form. So let's start with um, three. 270 degrees, okay? We'll start with degrees. So I want to plot this on a polar coordinate system, and this is again is my r and my theta. So always start with your theta, start with your angle. So theta is down here at 270, okay? So I know that I'm going around this way to 270 down here, so the point's going to be somewhere along here. And my r is 3, so I'm 3 units from the pole, which means I'm on the third concentric circle if I'm counting by 1. 1, 2, three. So I'm on the third concentric circle, a distance of three from the pole at 270 degrees down here. So this is the point that represents three, 270 degrees. Let's say that I want to graph because we could do also radians. Two comma five pi over six. Okay, so let's do that. Where's five pi over six located? Five pi over six is in quadrant two, so we know that the point is going to be located somewhere here. R is equal to 2, so I know I'm on the second concentric circle, right, if I count by 1s. So I'm a distance of 2 units from the pole, somewhere over here in quadrant 2. My reference angle is pi over 6, so I'm located here closer to the you know, polar axis than the vertical axis, and here's the point that represents 2 comma 5 pi over 6. Now, I haven't done any negative angles yet. Let's do... Um, 8, negative, 7 pi over 4, okay? Let's do that. So notice that my r is 8 this time, and that's pretty big. I don't want to draw 8 concentric circles. So what I'm probably going to do in this case is I'm going to draw 4 of them, but I'm going to say that I'm counting by 2s. So 2, 4, 6, and eight. So I'm on the fourth concentric circle, but it's still a distance of eight units from the pole. Now let's start with the angle, negative seven pi over four. At negative seven pi over four, we're going clockwise, right? In the negative angle direction, clockwise. Seven pi over four is almost a full negative revolution. It lands in quadrant one, here. Equidistant from the vertical and the horizontal axis, here. And I know that I'm eight units from the pole, so my point on this polar coordinate system is located there. Now, here's the interesting thing. Sorry guys. <laughs> here's the interesting thing. So far all of your R's have been positive. We haven't done any negative R's yet. And R could potentially be negative. But here's the thing. If R is a distance, remember, you know, when you guys do X's and Y's, if you have a negative X, you're going in the negative X direction to the left. If you have a negative Y, you're going in the negative Y direction down. But that doesn't exist on a polar coordinate system. We just have a distance from the pole and then around. So if R is negative, what happens? Well, let's start with, of course, we know the distance is two units from the pole. So let's start with drawing our two concentric circles. 
And let's start by looking at the angle 210. 210 degrees is in quadrant 3. Now, normally I would say, well, here's your point, right? On the second concentric circle, approximately here, 210 degrees. But if R is negative, what happens is it creates like a symmetry over the pole, and it bounces across the pole into the opposite quadrant, and in this case, we'll land in quadrant 1, approximately there. So again, if R is negative, you start with your angle. 210 degrees is here, somewhere in quadrant 3 with reference of 30 degrees from the, the uh, horizontal. But because R is 2, it's negative 2, what happens is it bounces me across the pole into the opposite quadrant, quadrant 1, same reference from the um, horizontal axis, and this would now be my point. So let's do a couple more with negative R's. So let's do negative 5, um, let's do a negative angle 2. Negative uh, 3 pi, over 4. So start by drawing my concentric circles. I'm going to count by 1. So I'm going to have 5 concentric circles. I don't know how many I have. 1, 2, 3, 4. I need one more. 5. Figures not perfect, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that fifth circle represents a radius of 5. And that's my distance from the pole. So I'm on that fifth circle there. Now let's start with the angle, negative 3 pi over 4. What quadrant is that located in? So I'm going in the negative um, angle direction from the polar axis, which would be this way, clockwise, and I'm going to land in quadrant 3. Negative 3 pi over 4 is here. Now, negative 5. I'm beyond that fifth concentric circle, but the thing is, because r is negative, again, I bounce across the pole into the opposite quadrant, quadrant 1, and this is where that point lies. Let's do negative 6, um, negative, let me do another radian angle. Uh, 2 pi over, no, 4 pi over 3. Negative 6, negative 4 pi over 3. I'm doing negatives because everybody gets scared of the negatives, so let's see if we can practice them. Now, Again, my R is 6, so I would be on the 6 concentric circle, but I'm not going to draw 6 circles. I'm going to draw 3 of them and just count by 2s, okay? So 2, 4, 6. Make sure you guys label so that we know how you're counting. And let's start with the angle. Negative 4 pi over 3, where is that located? So it's a negative angle, so I'm going in the negative direction. So I'm going clockwise from the polar axis. And negative 4 pi over 3 would land me in quadrant 2 with reference pi over 3 from the horizontal, so I'm up here. Now, I would be on this uh, six concentric, this concentric circle that has a radius of 6. I'd be on it, but again, my r is negative, right? So I'm not going to land in quadrant 2 and stay there. I'm going to bounce across the polar axis into quadrant th um, 4 in this case with the same reference, right? Same reference pi over 3 um, and land there at, at that point. So again, this is graphing on a polar coordinate system. You have the ordered pair r theta. r is your distance from the pole. Theta is your angle from the polar axis, always and forever. So r and theta. Start with your theta when you're plotting. And wherever it lands, r is that distance from the pole, so it's going to be on that concentric circle. If r is positive, you stay in the same quadrant that theta lies. But if r is negative, wherever that you know thing theta lies, you go in the opposite quadrant from where that is, but the same reference angle from the horizontal. Okay, so good luck. Let me know if you guys need more examples. Um, I'm going to have to do another video too because there are multiple representations of this point on a polar coordinate system. This is not the only one. And so there's infinite different points that could represent that location. And how do we represent all those different cases? So I'll try to do a video of that also. All right, so this is called a particular solution.